you're looking at what may be the world's first commute by way of a personal flying vehicle and leave it to Jetson Aero to do it in style. We've all thought about it. You walk out your front door, you hop in your personal flying vehicle, and you cruise over all that bumper-to-bumper -bumper gridlock to get to work. Well, that may not be a reality for most of us anytime soon, but startup Jetson Aero is showing us what the future of commuting could look like. That's if you happen to be commuting from an estate in the lush Tuscan hills of Italy. It's a beautiful flight over the Tuscan mountainside. You can see the hilly, the real typical rolling hills of Tuscany. Uh, yeah, it was fun. That is Jetson Aero CEO Peter Turnstrom talking about this milestone flight that happened back in May. I first talked with Turnstrom last year after the company went viral for its launch video. So I thought I'd check in and find out a little more about the flight and get an update on where the Jetson 1 EV toll stands today. We want to explore what practical stuff we can do with an EVPR. How far can we go? You know, can it replace a Vespa? Probably yes, you know, but you can't go to Ikea to it, you know, and you can't move pianos, grand pianos, but you can't do that. But hey, you can probably go pick up a bottle of Chianti from, from, the, from the neighbor. Turnstrom's co-founder, Tomas Patan, flew their prototype vehicle from his Tuscan home the nearly three miles to the current Jetson office, which also happens to be Turnstrom's home. In the five minute video, Patan takes off from what looks to be his enormous backyard. He flies over rolling hills that look like they belong on a postcard. He cruises over an orchard, through a valley, where he appears to pick up some serious speed. For what it's worth, Jetson says the max speed is 63 miles per hour. After flying over some power lines and more forest, Patan finally touches down on a landing pad at Turnstrom's home. Jetson says it believes this is the first time anyone has flown an EV toll to get to work. They say the flight reduced Patan's commute time by 88%. Now, if this is your first time seeing the Jetson 1, you probably don't spend much time on the internet. But here's a quick refresher. It's considered an ultralight EV toll under FAA rules. That means you don't need a license to fly it, and it can only be used for recreation. The Jetson 1 seats just a pilot and is powered by eight electric motors. If one of those motors goes out, it can still land safely with seven. The Tesla battery cells give it a flight time of 20 minutes, so if you're flying to work, you better work close to home. And Turnstrom says the design is so simple, anyone can learn to fly it in about five minutes. And I hope that's true, because people are lining up to buy them. Jetson has already sold more than 400 units at a price of $92,000 each, with first deliveries planned for 2023. And that's why they just bought a small airport in a tiny valley south of Florence that will become the new European headquarters. And at the bottom of that secret little valley, which looks like something from the Lord of the Rings, there is a 800 meter grass airstrip. You can land Cessnas and helicopters. And guess what? You can test fly a jet zones every day if you want here, and no one's gonna care. Now, after those first deliveries in 2023, Turnstrom says they want to move into mass production, 100 deliveries a month starting in 2024, with the goal of 10,000 units in the next five or six years. But the sky is not the limit, according to Jetson Aero, because they already have plans beyond the Jetson one. Turnstrom told me they're planning on developing and selling a two-seater and four-seater version of their EV toll, aptly named the Jetson 2 and the Jetson 4. Now, these would be much more expensive, high-end versions of their EV tolls, and they also would not qualify as those ultralight vehicles. So the company basically is waiting until regulators sort out all the red tape around EV tolls before they move forward on that project. So what do you think? Would you fly an EV toll like this to work? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to CNET for more What the Future. And if you want to learn more about some of the other EV tools that we've covered here, click on these videos over here. I'm Andy Altman, and I'll see you in the future.